Welcome back to this video on Cursor, the development tool that's a competitor to Visual Studio Code for all your development needs with AI built into it from the ground up. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the code that it produces from the Cursor model to see the security of it. And we're gonna use Sneak to scan it for vulnerabilities and any vulnerabilities that are reported by Sneak we're going to see if we can exploit those vulnerabilities in the application itself while it's running. And if that interests you, I hope you stick around. So let's get right into it. All right. Now that that's working, we've built out this UI note taking app with a title and some content, some login registration and all that fun stuff. Let's see what sneak says about all of this. So we're going to hide that, close this out, bada bing, bada boom, head on over to the sneak extension. We can see it's still talking about that cross site request forgery one. And one of these, is well you know what let's just look at the script js file that they said before which is in here and we could see sneak is saying there's a medium severity cross-site scripting vulnerability i wonder if we can take advantage of that let's see if we can exploit this live in action by pasting in some type of cross-site scripting payload in this vulnerable code that cursor gave to us for the front end or displaying the notes really quick all right, so this is really cool. And instead of me trying to figure out a payload to use to exploit that vulnerability that's being reported by Sneak, which is this cross-site scripting vulnerability, instead I asked Cursor about it and if it can provide me with some possible payloads to demonstrate exploiting the vulnerability and drive the importance of mitigating it. And what's great is it gave us this basic alert payload, which we can try that first. And then we'll try it and step through some of the other options that it's talking about here. So let's put in here, we're gonna say uh, XSS one and paste in that payload. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it didn't result in that alert function being triggered here, but it did show some different behavior now that that script is not showing the text of that, that we entered for the content of that note and the title is still there. So we're making some progress here. Let's see what else cursor says to us about different payloads we could use. We could steal cookies, right? So if there is a cookie or in this case, a JWT token, we can maybe try and get that by running a fetch script instead of an alert. I don't know that that would really do much here, especially since I don't have an attacker.com API running that can ingest that data, but maybe we could do window.location. We can see if that works, if we put that in there a keylogger payload, yikes, that's scary. And an event listener, fetch. Let's see if we can just console log it actually. And then we can try this DOM manipulation one too. All right, this is some great suggestions. I like this. Uh, let's do XSS2. I'm gonna paste this in and instead of fetching it, let's just console log the key that gets pressed. Console.log this e.key, see if that works. Okay, so it's not quite executing that code. I'm typing on my keyboard. Let's try one of the other ones. Let's see what else they got. DOM manipulation payload. Let's try that. Script document dot body enter in HTML. You have been hacked. Ooh. XSS3, paste that in, add the note. All right, so let's let's tell it what's happening and see if it maybe it'll expand upon this for us. Since these are not quite working, I don't see, there's no H1 on the page anywhere, right? It didn't really add anything. So it's not quite executing that payload. Inject the payload, show the impact, mitigating strategy. So this is cool too. Or you can also load external scripts, which would be interesting to do as well, right? This payload loads an external script from an attacker controlled server. All this stuff, great options of payloads to demonstrate the importance of fixing this vulnerability and why this vulnerability is something that you need to be concerned about if you have one of them in your own application. So let's talk about how they suggest mitigating it. Input validation, sanitization, absolutely. A content security policy, which is interesting since we do have a content security policy, but we probably haven't set up any directives to help avoid some of that. Escape the output and then use HTTP only and secure cookies for that one example that they were talking about. If Even if you have a cross-site scripting vulnerability, if your cookies, they have those HTTP only flags on it and secure, it will help prevent the access from JavaScript to that value of that cookie or sending it somewhere else. Okay, so let's tell it like, Hey, these were great options as payloads. However, they didn't quite work. The scripts didn't fully execute, but it did change the behavior of the application such that only the title of the note was displayed in the UI and the content 
where I placed the XSS payloads was no longer visible. What are some other payload options we could try that indeed execute JavaScript code? See what it comes up with. The reason why I'm really excited about this right now is when I try to do this with other models, they've been built out in such a way that they, uh, you know, they, they refer to their terms of service, their privacy, their morals and ethics that they have built into the model that the companies behind them, I think, put in place, which is somewhat understandable, but at the same time for an educational purpose and understanding better, it's important for us as developers to actually see hands on how these things can be taken advantage of why these vulnerabilities really are vulnerabilities and if you don't know about that i feel like if you're using ai to learn about things in general you're going to lean on that as well and if they don't give you answers like we're seeing here with cursor where it's giving us other options to test out then you're not going to understand it as well you're not going to educate yourself as best as you can using these ai tools like this so I'm really impressed even more. I was already going into this pretty impressed with Cursor, but Cursor's model is proving to be super helpful, especially in this case. So let's try this one. Let's try using eval to get it to go that route. So we're gonna say XSS4, paste that in, add the note. That didn't quite work either. We're not getting any error messages or anything like that. I'll try refreshing the page too, like maybe just loading it up. Nope, that didn't work either. Okay, let's see what other cases set timeout. This payload uses set timeout to delay the execution of alert, which can sometimes bypass certain filters. Document.write, use image tags. So this one I know will probably work. Let's try that one. I don't know that the other ones will. We're gonna try this though. Last but not least, hopefully. Five, paste that in there, add the note. Ooh, okay. So the content security policy is helping to prevent that from running any inline event handler because it violates the following content security policy. So that's good. The vulnerability is still there, but the content security policy, which is considered a defense in depth mechanism, is stopping it from really causing any further harm beyond, you know, saving the payload in, into the database here. So, okay, maybe we can tell Cursor about that. We can try using an iframe maybe. Let's see if we can do that. XSS6, paste that in, add the note. Okay, same thing. Content security policy blocking that from happening as well. There is an iframe though. It's just not loading. That's interesting. Uh, any other options we can try? Usually the, the image one would work, but the content security policy helped fix that. Let's try this one really quick. What are we up to? Seven now? Lucky number seven. Let's see. That also refused to run inline script. Hey, there we go. All right. So it's actually pretty good. I'm impressed. So I'm really impressed with Cursor so far. I'm going to keep using it as my daily driver to see what other aspects of it around the AI, because we've only been using the chat interface in this case, but there's also inline capabilities directly in the files that you might have open and other ways to interact with Cursor's AI capabilities. So I'm going to keep doing that. Maybe we'll have a follow-up video after I've had some time to trial it out a bit more and get back to you. But I hope you found this useful. And if you did, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who can put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.